Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides patch rundown. My name is Kellen and today I'm going to be going over all of the changes that were made in patch 9.12. I'll cover all of the details, including a tier list that was made by our in-house analyst and partnered pro players. There were tons of changes this patch, guys, which raised a lot of questions. How will the corrupting potion nerfs affect the meta? Will the Rise and Silas reworks that came out completely gut their kits? Is the new Mordekaiser rework OP? Don't worry, we got you covered and we'll answer all of the questions in today's video. But remember, since this patch just hit the live servers, please do keep in mind these tier lists are purely predictions. We encourage all of our viewers to comment on our tier lists and say if you agree or disagree with us on specific champion placements. It's no big deal at all. Also, as a reminder, there will be an updated mid-patch tier list video one week into the patch where we use fresh stats to give you the best and most importantly most accurate tier list available. Also guys, make sure you're checking out ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements to your rank. ProGuides is the best proven way to significantly improve your rank and see it go up this season. Click the link below to watch guides and learn from your favorite pro players such as Nightblue3, BunnyFufu, and Hi. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we move into our top lane section, let's go over a few of the biggest changes that will affect our tier lists across the board. Firstly, Corrupting Potion will be nerfed on this patch, and its burn damage will be changed from 15 to 30 based on your level, to 15 damage at all ranks. This is a slight buff to the first few minutes of the game, but it's an overall nerf to this item. Next up, Ryze and Silas will receive mini reworks this patch and we'll go over their new kits in our mid lane section a little bit later on in the video, so stay tuned for those two champs. Mordekaiser is getting a full visual gameplay update and a complete overhaul and he'll be available sometime in patch 9.12. This is really exciting, and if you want to see a complete rundown and an in-depth guide for Mordekaiser, check out our previous video, The Only Mordekaiser Guide You'll Ever Need. Because of their massive amounts of changes, Rise, Silas, and Mordekaiser will not be included in our predictive tier list this time, but we'll make sure that we include them in our updated tier list video next week. Our challenger analysts follow a general rule where we don't want to include new champions or champs that received reworks in our tier list, at least until there's a decent sample size, because making a prediction on their stance in the meta this early could be dangerously inaccurate. Fun, but probably inaccurate. So make sure you're pressing that sub button and the notification bell, that way you can watch our mid-patch update next week, and if you're curious about their ranking, it'll be there. Now, let's start the pop-off with top lane. Aatrox has been one of the strongest champions in the game and has been sitting comfortably in our S plus tier for far too long. Aatrox will receive a small nerf this patch to his passive called Deathbringer's Dance, which will have its cooldown change from 15 at all ranks to 24 to 12 based on his level. On top of that, his ultimate world ender will have its bonus healing change from all sources to self healing only. These nerfs are light but decent enough to drop him out of our S plus tier into our S tier. He'll still remain as a powerful pick in patch 9.12 and you'll still be able to continue to play Aatrox to great success, however the idea of Aatrox plus Soraka or Aatrox plus Sona will be weaker on this patch. For Aurelia, she's always been in an awkward spot in the meta. Although her win rate is relatively low, the best players such as TF Blade have shown us just how powerful she can be in the correct hands. In order to keep her in check, her E will have its range lowered from 850 to 775 and its cooldown increased by a sizable amount. Aurelia will be dropped into our top lane B tier for patch 9.12, but we'll see if she can make a comeback into A tier for our mid patch update. Tom Kench has been one of the most oppressive top laners in the game and is in dire need of a nerf. For 9.12, Tom will receive a few changes to his kit. For starters, his 0 mana QW combo will receive a bug fix and now will cost the intended amount. Next up, his W, Devour, will have its damage nerfed during the early game but buffed during the mid game. On top of that, the allied spit range was lowered by 150 and the champion spit lockout time was lowered to 0.25 seconds from 1 second. Since most of these changes are geared towards his role as a support, Tom Kench will remain in our S tier for the top lane. If these changes combined with the Corrupting Potions nerf didn't occur on this patch, Tom would be sitting in our S plus tier. Our analysts predict that Tom Kench will receive even more nerfs in the coming patches, so make sure to abuse him while you can. The tier list for top sees a few minor changes compared to the one that we had before. Aatrox has been dropped down from our S plus tier into S, and Urgot was dropped down to our A tier. Sitting in S tier, we have Aatrox, Kench, Darius, Riven, Vlad, and Renekton. The Corrupting Potion nerf doesn't affect the top lane meta too much, but the champions who rely on it such as Aurelia, Jax, and Tom Kench will become slightly weaker. 
In our A tier, we welcome a new member in Pike. Pike Top has been rising in popularity ever since MSI, and he's finally made his way into the A tier. However, it's been confirmed by Riot that Pike will be hard nerfed in solo lanes for patch 9.13, so you have two weeks to play him while you can. For 9.12, our analysts recommend that you pick up Vladimir in the top lane. He's still the most underrated champion in the game and is broken beyond belief once you master him. It's very surprising that he hasn't been nerfed yet. Alright, let's move on to the Forest Dwellers. For Zac, he recently received a revert on his ultimate, followed by a few nerfs to his base damage. Although these nerfs seemed fair on paper, he's just too weak once you actually play him. In order to help Zac out a little bit, he will receive some buffs on this patch. His W Unstable Matter will have its damage increased by 10 at all ranks, and his ultimate Let's Bounce will have its knockback range lowered by 150, and will now drop one blob if you hit an enemy. Zac will be moved up to our jungle B tier for this patch. The jungle tier list will see a few changes compared to our previous tier list. In S tier, we welcome two new members in Kane and Sejuani. For Sej, she's had a sudden surge in play rate and win rate due to her presence in competitive play, and she's safely made it into our S tier for this patch. Kane, on the other hand, has been excelling in the meta due to more tanky champions such as Sejuani and Nunu seeing a lot more play. Red Kane can absolutely demolish tanks and is the perfect champion to pick up this patch. Aatrox has been dropped to our C tier jungler due to the nerfs in his kit, and for patch 9.12, our challenger analysts recommend that you pick up Hecarim in the jungle. He's by far the best solo queue jungler in the game right now, and can easily give you that competitive edge you need to win more games. Let's move on to mid lane. In patch 9.12, Ryze will be receiving his annual rework. One year in, one year out, Ryze always gets his changes. Let's do the old rundown. So Ryze's base mana has been lowered from 400 to 300, and his Q has been reworked completely. Overload will now have its damage increased by 20 at all ranks, and its skill points have been lowered from 6 down to 5. If you don't know why it had 6 points, that's because his old Realm Warp used to have 2 points into it instead of 3, but that's been changed and those two have been swapped, so now Overload has 5 points and Realm Warp has 3 points. The shield you receive from Overload is completely removed, and the spell flux damage has been changed to scale off of his ultimate rank instead, incentivizing more Rises to actually skill their ultimate at level 6. The bonus movement speed that you get has been lowered by a small amount during the early to mid game, but remains the same during the late game. Next up, his W Rune Prison. It's been changed to a 35% slow instead of a short root, but it actually will root the enemy for 1.5 seconds if the enemy has spell flux on them first, so if you E into W, you'll get the root. The bonus mana for Rune Prison has been increased by 3%, giving it a little bit more damage, and its mana cost has been lowered by 10 during the early game, but increased by 10 during the late game. For his E Spell Flux, the damage has been lowered at all ranks by 10, but the mana cost has actually been changed a little bit in the early game, now only costing 40 mana, allowing you to stack your tier slightly easier during the early game due to compensating for his lower base mana. On top of that, it always bounces off the primary target, so you don't always have to do E, E, and then Q for wave clear, sometimes you can just do E, Q. Finally, with Realm Warp, it now has 3 ranks in the ability like we said, it will change the overload bonus damage with targets that are affected by Flux, and the cooldown is actually a little bit longer in the early game, but then scales down to go down at level 16 down to 150 seconds. Ryze will be unranked in our tier list for now because there's just not going to be enough data to give you guys a reasonable prediction, but we will include him in our mid-patch update video, so make sure you're tuned for that next week. For Silas, he's been sitting at the top of our mid lane tier list for the past couple of weeks and is finally receiving a few changes to balance him out. His passive has been changed to scale more off his level, it only has 2 charges now, and will do 30% of the intended damage to secondary targets. Next up, his Q chain last will have its explosion radius reduced by 20, and the Q2 damage scaling lowered significantly. His W Kingslayer will receive a small buff to its healing and AP ratio, but it's followed by a massive nerf to his E. This will only grant a shield if you hit a champion or monster, and its cooldown has been increased by 2 seconds in the late game. His E is followed by a few compensation buffs to its shielding value and AP ratio, but this is a big nerf because you don't just get a shield for free. Silas will be unranked for now in our tier list, but due to the same reasons as Ryze, we'll be putting him in our mid-patch update, so make sure you click the sub button to be notified of that video if you'd like to play Silas. Compared to our previous mid lane tier list, we've got a couple of changes that are worth noting that we want to highlight today. In our S tier, we have Ari, Zed, Talon, Malzahar, Vladimir, Katarina, and our new member, Pike. 
Pike mid is very strong at the moment, and tons of pro players have been calling him the Talon on steroids. His roaming threat combined with his burst damage is insane, and he is confirmed to get a nerf for 9.13. Many of you guys are wondering why Katarina has been placed in our S tier not only this patch, but even on the last patch. The truth is, she snuck up on us from behind and her win rate and play rate have been quietly increasing for the past couple of patches. She's now holding onto one of the highest win rates in the mid lane and is almost tied with Lux in terms of play rate. Aatrox will remain in our A tier for the mid lane this patch and is still a great pickup despite the nerfs he received. For 9.12, it's obvious that our challenger analysts are going to recommend for you to pick up Pike in the mid lane, because like we mentioned before, he is guaranteed to get nerfed in the next patch, so our challenger analysts are saying abuse him while you can because this is going to be your free low for two weeks. Alright, on to the ADCs. Ash is receiving a small buff to her W Volley. Volley's cooldown will be lowered by one second every single rank, and Ash will be placed in our A tier for ADCs. For Caitlyn, she's receiving a small buff to her base AD this patch, and it'll be increased from 58 to 60. She will remain in A tier for ADCs this patch. The list for bottom laners is pretty similar to the one that we had previously. For our S tier, we have Draven, Sivir, Jinx, Zaya, Kai'Sa, and Ezreal. More often than not, especially for bottom laners, these are just going to be the 6 best champions in their role for patch 9.12, and our analysts recommend that you pick up a handful of them to learn how to play and climb with. Draven has been moved up to our S tier, but this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, because he's always been on the brink of making that small push. For 9.12, our challenger analysts recommend that you play Ezreal in the bottom lane. He is one of, if not the most safe AD carry in the game, and can bring you the most consistent results in ranked games. Try him out, and let us know how that goes down below. Last, but certainly not least, let's move on to the support list. For Karma, she's been struggling a little bit in the meta for quite a while, actually, and because of that, she's looking to receive a few pretty big buffs this patch. Her Q and her Flame will have its slow increase from 25% to 35%, and her E Inspire will have its mana cost reduced, followed by a duration buff. Karma will actually be moved all the way up to our support A tier for this patch, so make sure that you try her out. Lulu just hasn't been able to keep up with her other shielding support counterparts, but will receive a little bit of love from the balance team. Her E help picks will have its shield increased by 10 at all ranks, and will have its mana cost reduced by a small amount during the mid to late game. Lulu will join Karma and move up to our support A tier this patch. The Naughty Nautilus has been one of the most broken supports in the game and was sitting in our S plus tier for patch 9.11. He just did way too much damage, was unkillable at the same time, making him an extremely powerful pick with tons of CC and engaged potential. For 9.12, Nautilus will have his Q's damage lowered by 20 at rank 1, but will be unaffected during the late game. Nautilus will be dropped down from S plus tier down to S tier, so he's still really really good, just not maybe the most broken champion in the game. Despite her literal joke of a win rate, Yumi has been extremely powerful in high elo and competitive play in the recent weeks. In order to put her back in check, her passive bop and block will have its AP ratio and mana fun nerfed. However, she'll receive a compensation buff to her base health, followed by a nerf to her adaptive share on W, you and me. Yumi will remain in our support B tier. The support tier list remains pretty similar to the one that we had before. In our S plus tier, we welcome a new member, Janna. After her mini rework recently, her win rate spiked up, and she's replaced Nautilus at the top of our tier list. For this patch, our analysts recommend you pick up either one of our S plus tier supports before they get nerfed, because Lux and Janna are very powerful right now. Lastly, Dark Cosmic Jin, Dark Star Karma, and Dark Star Shaco will be available on the Rift during 9.12, and these skins are looking amazing, so make sure you pick those up. That's it for our 9.12 rundown video. If you enjoyed watching this, then please leave a like, comment, and sub to our channel to be notified of our next video. Make sure to check out our website for free content and guides that were made by your favorite pro players. The second part of our meta analysis video will be available next week, which will bring you the most accurate and best tier list available using fresh statistics at the time. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the Rift.